at least says you can do more. Okay, and that's it. The chair will use his right to speak last on this. The, uh, it seems obvious to me, but it not necessarily to everybody, that it is a minimum requirement and not a maximum. But it's a reasonable. Thank you. Um, but it is a reasonable position for people to disagree upon. It is the purpose of this meeting. The, the meeting is going to be ruling on this. Do bear in mind that the, no matter which way the meeting votes on this, it's going to go into the rulings of continuing effect. So you are setting a precedent here one way or the other. The, the, quest, the question is on whether the chair's ruling that the rooting, wording in 311.4 is a minimum, not a maximum, and therefore the motion on the floor is in order that's, that's what the ruling is. The chair, that's the chair's ruling. Those who are in favor of the chair's ruling, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed to the chair's ruling, hands down. There being uh, less than a majority in the negative, the chair's ruling is sustained. The motion is in order. We have used up all debate time on the proposal. Mr. Glazer. My name is Glenn Glazer. I move to extend debate by six minutes. Is there any objection to extending debate for six minutes? Yes. Uh, very well. Then in that case, a two-thirds vote being necessary to extend debate. All those in favor of extending debate by six minutes, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down. There being less than two-thirds, the debate is not extended. Debate time is over. Mr. Cronengold? Uh, you can move to amend. Come to the microphone then. Yes. Mr. Cronengold, hold off for the secretary to get a chance to get caught up, but go ahead and go to the microphone. I'll let you know. And would take all I see. Okay. I'm caught up. Mr. Cronengold. I move to amend the, mo um, the motion under consideration uh, to add the words, I believe there, um, but not including candidates receiving fewer than five votes, fewer, fewer than five nominations. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hang on just a moment. There's debate time. I believe we can take the words directly out of the Constitution. I'm trying to find the right spot for it. Thank you. No, 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 no. I know what he's doing. He's, he's adding it to the resolution, but not including in. Okay. This would be to add at the end of the first clause on page 27 of your agenda, following the words where it says, but not including any information that could be used to relate ballots to members who cast them, and not including any nominees that receive uh, fewer than five or five or fewer votes or was it fewer than fewer than five nominations fewer than five nominations uh, this, there's second to his motion second this is not debatable a point of order uh, we have yet to resolve the chairs the appeal of the chair's motion yes we did we just did oh sorry the vote was the vote was to sustain the chair that was what the vote was <laughs> The members are please reminded that if you are not sure what you are voting on, you need to stop me and ask what we are voting on. Okay, I'm going to assume you know what you're voting on unless you say otherwise. For what purpose does the member rise? I'm trying to take a vote. Uh, each said five votes while the uh, Constitution said five percent. No. That, that, that is, that it doesn't, this is not a constitutional amendment. It, that is debate upon the motion. This is an undebatable motion because debate time has expired. <laughs> On the question to add a writer to the last, uh, the last sentence of the first clause of the amendment to restrict it to works that receive more than five vo votes, uh, nominations, nominations, thank you. Uh, all those in favor of the amendment, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. The negative has it. The uh, amendment does not pass. On the motion, as originally published. Sorry, what? Can I suggest to people who wish to gain the floor not only stand, but also yell, Mr. At this Chairman, point. or something? Yes, because Doctor, otherwise they yeah. may not be noticed. That's right. Dr. Dr. Lurie. Oh, come on. I, I wish to uh, uh, amend the, the, the resolution. 
to add uh, the, the administrators of the 2015 and 2016 Hugo Awards so that we will have information next year when we might be uh, ratifying something we vote on this year. Uh, this is a motion to globally replace 2015 and, with 2015 and 2016 everywhere it appears in the motion. Is there a second? All those in favor of the amendment, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, the affirmative has it. Uh, uh, is there a, did a member just move? Yes. yes, the secretary is trying to catch up because you are now going very fast. <laughs> we need to proceed with deliberate speed, not excessive speed. It's, it hasn't been, it has been approved. You can't call the question. The chair will now read the amended a motion. And this is what we'll be voting on when I get through it. Unless some of you have, uh, oh, I'm sorry. There was a motion to end the debate and bring it to a vote. Is there a second to that motion? Second. All those in favor of ending the debate and the making of any subsidiary motions, raise your hands. Hands down those opposed. Hands down, there being two thirds in the affirmative debate and further discussion and a subsidiary motions is ended. Okay. <laughs> Start again. It's item B23. This is what we'll be voting upon. Moved that the WSFIS business meeting request that the administrators of the 2015 and 2016 Hugo Awards make publicly available anonymized raw nominating data from the 2015 and 2016 Hugo Awards including the works nominated on each ballot in each category, but not including any information that could be used to relate ballots to the members who cast them, and resolve that it is the opinion of the, of the WSFIS business meeting that releasing such anonymized raw nominating data after the announcement of the results of the 2015 or 2016 Hugo Awards is not a violation of the privacy of members' ballots. A majority being necessary to adopt this amendment. All those in favor of the uh, amendment, mo resolution. All those in favor, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, the affirmative has it. This uh, resolution is adopted. Mr. Glazer. First, uh, member will state their, qu uh, their question of privilege. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm the Vice Chair of Business and Finance uh, for this convention. I'm a Glenn Glazer. Um, and uh, uh, Hugo administration falls under my purview. We had some discussion about this uh, resolution prior to uh, today. And um, while many of us have grave, res rev grave reservations about this resolution, it is our intent to comply yeah. with the will of the business meeting. Uh, wait, just a moment, Mr. Glazer. Is there any, uh, has anything been done on the practical implementation details of the request? Does any member of the Hugo Administration Committee want to speak to it? Ron, would you it? like to talk to that? Mr. Oaks. Uh, Ron Oaks. As the developer or current developer of the Hugo web application and the keeper of the database, uh, we do have the technical capability of delivering the anonymized data uh, in a file, hopefully before the Sunday business meeting. So. <laughs> Uh, uh, is uh, you're intending to uh, distribute it through the convention website or something of that nature? Or? No. I, 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 no, it's not. A, I'm not asking your permission. I'm asking the convention what it plans to do. Yeah. Yes, please. So we we know of one particular request um, uh, for this. Uh, we will deliver that one on a stick. Um, uh, on a, on a <laughs> 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 Not a pike. <laughs> <laughs> and for the rest, uh, 
if you are interested in this information, uh, please ma email hugoadmin at sasquan.org and we'll make arrangements. I don't really feel comfortable with posting this on a website. Um, but we will certainly transparently make it freely available to anyone who asks. And I may put something on the website that says, if you're interested in this, ask for it this way. Okay. That deals with that. Uh, we are actually just slightly early uh, for this, but I do believe the next item is, would be very time consuming. Uh, let me try, I want to try a couple of things here. Um, there are three minor resolutions at, on slide nine there that we go. The continuation of the Folly YA committee and the membership rates and types committees. Are there any objection to continuing these committees as currently constituted? Hearing none, without objection, uh, resolutions B27, 8, and 9 are adopted. The chair appoints their existing committees as currently constituted with the, ex with the addition of Mr. Cronengold to the YA Award Committee. <laughs> and all of these committees have their, uh, as have their existing charges that they may uh, supplement their members at the discretion of their committee chairs continued. Okay, 7, 8, and 9. B27, B28, and B29. Those are resolutions. Okay. I, the secretary asks me for clarification. The items listed in your agenda as B27, B28, and B29 were all adopted. Basically, because of no objection, the rules were suspended. All three motions were immediately adopted. Their committees were continued as constituted. They are res they're motions. They, yeah, they're not in the inverted agenda, but they're, they're motions that come out. They're motions that came out of the committees, and I listed them as 7, 8, and 9 there. They're just not in the printed agenda. Each of those committees moved its own continuation, and that they are motions even if they're not in the form of resolutions. Mr. Bloom. Does the chairman of the committee want to take uh, want to speak to that? Since the committee, I, I misunderstood the committee's report. I thought it wanted to be continued. I think we deal better to just go ahead and let it go. Okay, that brings us up. Very, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Had a, a bingo there. Uh, I, I forgot there. I did need to. Uh, the members spoke from the floor, and I didn't restate them. The, the, it was stated that the report of the membership type rates and types committee actually called for itself to be on hiatus for a year. But the chairman of that committee said, "Oh, it's not to go ahead and continue it anyway. It can just not meet, and that deals with that anyway." <laughs> yes. Person, question of privilege. Yes. My name is Kate Secor. If we're going to take a break before we move on to B24, yes. I would request that it be long enough that it can be a bio break. Yeah, I'm aware of that. I'm trying to. <laughs> the ch before anybody tries to get it, it is time for a break. This meeting is about to recess, and when it reconvenes, it will reconvene as a committee of the whole to discuss the 4-6 and Y Hugo. The meeting is in recess Wait. for um, approximately 10 minutes, or, I believe. Uh, I said why Hugo. I keep it for the for the Hugo the EPH and four six um, uh, okay, well, uh, is uh, eleven is ten after the hour okay? Sure. Yeah, uh, this meeting is in recess until um, eleven eleven. What? We'll get it when we reconvene. I promise. <laughs>